This lesson starts at the fishing miracle breakfast. Encounters with Jesus have a purpose. So after the seven disciples and Jesus ate, Jesus had a world-changing exchange with Simon Peter. Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? Yea, Lord. Three times the essence of this same question was asked, and three times Simon Peter says, Yes, Lord. But like his third denial, we see his passion as he responds to the third time Jesus asks the question. Jesus recognizes that there is a large world and this gospel must be spread. Then and now, discipleship begins with salvation, but it flourishes only when we grow and serve. In this lesson, Jesus educates his disciples through Simon Peter, showing them that we must not only seek men's souls, but we must shepherd them. This new faith, some would call it a cult at this time, needed a leader for the hundreds of hands and voices that would be called upon to rise up and spread the good news in a hostile world. Jesus also knew that this leader will need to have a sacrificial love of Jesus and a love for the work of the church. His conversation with Peter in verses 15 through 17, in essence say, if you love me, then you must have the passion enough. You must be sacrificial enough to build and maintain, to spread and grow, to teach and develop, to lead this new body of Christians, even though it means adversity and death. Note here, in verse 20, Peter turns around and he sees the disciples that Jesus loved following him. We know from this verse that Peter and Jesus were having a private conversation. Peter, who had boasted of his love for Jesus before his denials, was hurt the third time he was questioned about his love. But this had a purpose of demonstrating that the brash, self-confident Peter was changed. Peter and leaders of today must be self-aware of the folly of self-confidence. Christians with brash, holier-than-thou attitudes do not attract people to the church. They run them away. Humility is important in Christian leadership. Peter and modern Christians are reminded that the measure of one's love for Christ is not based upon the lip service, but it is based upon how we conduct our lives, how we serve our God. Another note here, Jesus accepted Peter's profession of love on face value, and he commissioned him to lead his flock, the church. Jesus then warned Peter that this work of shepherding the flock is one that will be done with great personal sacrifice. In his conversation with Peter, Jesus predicts Peter would die the mortar's death. Following Jesus would mean that Peter would be walking in the very steps of his death. As they were walking, Peter could see John who was following them at a distance. We all have moments where we question, why is something happening to us? Peter had that kind of moment. So Peter questions if his fate was common to all the other disciples. Will John die as a mortar too? Jesus tells Peter, this was not your concern. Your sole obligation and your focus should be to follow the path that has been ordained by God for you. We all are given our own talents and our own paths. Now, some who heard the response Jesus made to Peter concluded that John would not die. But our Lord was only saying that 
Whether John lives or dies was not Peter's concern that Peter had a charge to keep and a God to glorify. This portion of the scripture makes a unique contribution to the gospel by underscoring the duty of discipleship for all of us. What should disciples do? Jesus answers that question. First, we must seek salvation. Next, we must follow Jesus seeking salvation for mankind. And third, we must shepherd the souls of those we have introduced to the gospel. Jesus did many things, but as a New Testament Christian, for us to follow him, we must stay focused and realize that we still have a charge to keep and a God to glorify. That's the lesson for this week. Have a great week. Bye. Keep ahead, Johnny. Keep ahead, Johnny. Keep ahead, Johnny. Keep ahead.